Okay, hello everybody. Uh, so, this is the video that I told you that I was going to record for you, and this is for GWS 294. Uh, as I mentioned in the email, class today is canceled. This is Tuesday, 221, 2017. I'm saying today because I'm you're probably going to see it on Tuesday, but I'm recording it the night before. Okay, so class is canceled today, but I encourage you to get together to study with your classmates anyway, since you know you will have the room. Uh, if you want to get together and study, you don't have to, but you also know that other people in the class are available at that time, so you might, you know, try to get with your group, uh, message each other, see if you want to meet up there, or just come to class and, and, and um, try to get together and study with whoever comes. So that's an option. All right, so as I mentioned in the email, please watch this whole video today, even though um, you're probably just wanting to go off and do your own thing it's really important so that you are able to plan out your time for the next couple weeks, okay? Alright, so this is what we're going to discuss in this video. Four things. Alright, the first thing is upcoming assignments. Alright, so I'm going to show you um, where we're at in the, in the schedule. I'm sure you already know this, but... Alright, so here's the schedule. Here's what we're supposed to do today in class. Right? So the study guide is available. I already told you all to look at it, work on it, and then you'd be able to ask me questions about it today. So um, we were also going to look over these assignment descriptions for these three things. Okay, um, Even though this research project is due, I think, April 20th, it's due you know, a ways away, you have a proposal for it due coming up very soon. Okay, you also have a paper due coming up very soon. So it's really important that you have an awareness of when it's due so that you are using your time wisely. Okay? Alright, also note that on the 23rd there is no class because you're going to be, um, because I'm trying to give you that space to either study for your exam or actually take your exam. So there's no class this week at all. Alright, so going further down on the schedule, you see that we have a reading uh, on the next um, class period. I know that after an exam a lot of times uh, teachers give a light load um, or even if teachers don't give you a light load there's this kind of like sense of mental completion like you have completed this task now you can just you know focus on other things. Well in this class unfortunately we have a rigorous schedule around midterm okay so you have to do the midterm exam and then you immediately have this research proposal these readings due on Tuesday, and then um, a response paper due the next day, plus another um, reading, and then your short paper due the day after that. Okay, so let's go back and, and look at these a little bit more. Okay, so no class this week at all, you're taking care of the midterm exam, but then the Tuesday, next Tuesday, a week from today, you are going to be watching Paradise Bent, which is available for streaming online at this link. If this link doesn't work, just try it again. I've had it sometimes um, work for me, and then I try it five or not work for me, and then five minutes later it will work for me. So just try it again. If you are unable to access it, um, you might search for you know Paradise Bent on the UIC um, uh, library page, or you can just email me. If you have any trouble accessing this film, just email me, but this link should work. And if it doesn't, try five minutes later, and then try to search for it. If you can't, um, ask your research librarian or ask me. Okay, so that's going to take 50 minutes to watch this thing. You know, make sure that you take notes. Then you're also going to have this India Matters, the third gender, another documentary, only 19 minutes. Again, make sure that you take notes. These two videos are optional. One's a lot shorter than the other. And then you have this research um, project proposal email due. Okay, so let's talk for a minute about um, what this research project is. Okay, so if you click on here, you'll be taken to the research project proposal email assignment description. And it's really important that you read the assignment description for all the assignments, but especially since we're not going over it in extreme detail today, make sure that you read it and have an understanding of, of what it's going to be about. <clears throat> okay, so this proposal, this proposal is choosing a topic, basically, for your project your project that will be due April 20th. So one thing that's in this assignment description for the proposal email is the research project itself. The research project itself does have a long assignment description. It's several pages, but you should know 
that um, really it's not that long because you have several formats that you can choose. So there's five different formats that you can choose for your project. A research paper, a blog with images, a zine or a comic, a documentary or a show, a video documentary or an audio documentary or a podcast. So you have these five options. And then there's going to be like around a page assignment description for each of those projects. But if you only choose one, you only have to read. Well, of course, you're only going to choose one. Um, you're only going to have to read that one um, page. So it is a long enough assignment description, but you don't have to read all of it because... Um, you know, there's a, a page for each different type, okay? But really, at this point, you don't even have to understand too much about the type of, um, of assignment or of the format for the, for the, um, research project at this point. The important point is just to understand a sense of what's required in terms of sources and in terms of topic so that you can choose an appropriate topic. So make sure that you read the first page for sure, and maybe just skim over the one um, for the traditional research paper, which is what most people choose, um, and skim over this, and then maybe if you're interested in some of the others, skim over that. But the most important thing is for you to read the first page of this. So, um, you know, you have to shed light on an approved topic, and once you get your pro your topic approved, you're kind of locked in for that, um, unless you talk to me and, and get permission to change it. You're going to have to have at least two scholarly sources on that topic, um, and then you're going to have to have two other reliable sources. You're going to have to cite um, at least two assigned readings from the course on top of these other things. Um, Scholarly sources mean they have to be, you know, at least 10 pages long and they have to be in a peer-reviewed uh, journal. That's a very particular um, source requirements, which we can talk about later on, but, but there's information about it here. And then, oh, this is just another option for a source. So, it has to have something to do with the course. But it, you are really open, so if there's some topic that we've talked about in class previously that you wanted to explore in more depth, or if there's some topic that you see um, coming up later in the in the schedule that you want to talk about, then that would be a good thing. If you just have an issue that you wanted to talk about and we haven't you know, brought it into the course at all, if it's related to transgender studies in any way, um, it's probably game for this um, this project. So, you know, read through this assignment description and then read through this uh, proposal, this um, assignment description for the research proposal. Okay, so once again, this project is going to be due, this final research project is due April 20th, I think, sometime in, in April, but you have to do a proposal for it so that I can approve whatever topic you've decided to work on, okay? Now, you can email me and you can say, hey, I want to do this topic, but I'm going to try to make sure that nobody does the same topic in the class, so there's going to be, you know, one, a different topic for every single student. So you can, you know, send to me what you want to do, but it's not a guarantee that you're going to be able to do it. So a lot of times people end up picking like too broad a topics too and I try to make them get more specific so for example someone might want to talk about um, you know discrimination against trans people well that's too broad you'd have to pick a very particular kind of discrimination and perhaps a very specific kind of trans person maybe you want to talk about um, discrimination against um, non-binary people of color or non-binary people who um, aren't super skinny and super young. Um, you know, that's something that you could talk about. You need to try to pick a very specific topic, okay? Now, you can go ahead and send me your broad topic if you want, but just know that we're going to have to have some go back and forth about it, and I would strongly encourage you to do some reading online on whatever your topic is that you're choosing so that you have a sense of um, how you might narrow that topic or if it if the topic you're choosing is narrow enough. So I do strongly encourage you to um, do some reading so that you're not sending me the broadest topic, um, that you're actually picking something that's closer to what you want. I do encourage you to, to try to pick something that's part of your interest too. So maybe it's related to your major or your the career that you want or whatever grad program that you want to go in. Or maybe it's about your identity or maybe it's about an identity of someone that you care about. Um, so I do encourage you to try to pick something that you have an interest in. And if you're not sure which you have an interest in, you know, you could try to come to my office hours uh, when I'm back on campus next week. Which would, I guess would only give you one day, one day before the uh, proposal is due. But we can have a conversation about it over email if you wanted to get started and send the proposal early. 
Okay, so this assignment description about the email proposal is going to tell you to, to read the assignment description for the research project, and it's also going to tell you, you know, this is related to scholastic debates, representation, history, current community needs. You know, just make sure that you read this entire thing. It's going to give you some examples of some um, specific topics that that um, that hopefully will help you pick something that's that is not too broad. And remember, after you get your pro your topic approved, you're not able to change it without prior approval. Um, let's see. Okay, so after you've done some reading online uh, about whatever topic that you're interested in doing, and you feel like it is specific enough for the requirements of this assignment, then you're going to send me the proposal. Now, it's just going to be over email. You're not going to attach any documents. It's really just very simple. But don't rush yourself into sending an email because far too often I just get these emails where people haven't thought about it enough. Okay, So think about it enough. Uh, do a little reading online. Try to make sure that your topic is specific enough. Then send me the email. Okay, So here's what you should do um, for the email proposal. These six things. Okay. I've asked for a very specific subject line because I want to make sure that I don't lose any emails because I get I get inundated with proposals a lot and I need to be able to keep track of them. <coughs> Alright, so put this in the subject line, you know, do gr put a greeting. I get too many um, emails that just forego any of those things that are good indicators for how to politely engage with people. Uh, over email, so you know, just go ahead and do you know, dear Erica or dear Professor Chu or whatever. Okay, tell me your proposed research topic in one sentence. This is challenging for a lot of people. They end up wanting to write me a paragraph. Just write one sentence. Okay, so here's an example. My proposed topic is current barriers to transgender women in Poland receiving adequate health care. Okay, number four. Tell me why this topic relates to trans studies in one to three sentences. Again, not a whole lot. I just need to know that you actually thought about it, and it is related to trans studies. Five, uh, tell me why you want to do this topic in one to three sentences. Again, it doesn't have to be very long. It just gives me a good idea on how to um, guide you if I feel like you need to alter your topic in any way. And then when you sign your name, please include your first and last name, because I have to keep track of this for your grade, um, and sometimes I don't know what your full name is. Okay, um, so if you do all these six things and put some effort into choosing your appropriate topic, topic, you will just receive full credit, which is 25 points in the ETC category of your grade. Um, so make sure that you do this on time. Um, and we might have to have several emails, so it's really important that you do it on time because it might take a week or two to have all of these emails back and forth until you get approved. But you're not going to get those points until you actually get your topic approved. So again, you have to follow up. If I email you back and say, I need you to do this, then you need to go do that and you need to write me back. Now, if it takes you a few days to do that, that's fine, but um, it does need to get done. All right, so that's what's happening with the, with the uh, research project proposal, uh, which is related to the research project. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so back to the schedule. All right, so that email proposal is due Tuesday, February 28th, which is a week from today. Okay, so that Thursday, you have this other reading. Senate, a lot of people find very challenging. So it's not extremely long. I mean, like less than 15 pages. It's not extremely long, but people find it very challenging. So make sure that you give yourself enough time to, to read that. You will have a response paper due on Senate that night. And then you have this optional, a place in the middle. All right. So the week after that, which is two weeks from today, you are going to have this short uh, video that you need to watch before class, and then we'll keep talking about the things that we have been talking about, and then you'll have the short paper due. Okay, now I know that this is scary um, to have this paper due so soon after you return from your exam, but that's why I am making sure to talk to you about it now. So here's the assignment description for the short paper. Okay, you have two options. Papers are four to five pages, double-spaced, Times New Roman, size 12 font, um, but I also... I think I give you um, a word count to 1,200 to 500 words. Okay, so you're going to choose one of these options. It just depends on what you want to write about. The first one has to do, I think, with a historical figure, uh, and the second one has to do with um, 
one indigenous slash non-Western form of gender variance. Okay, so this is kind of some stuff that we talked about previously in the semester, and this is some of the stuff that we're going to talk about immediately after the exam. Um, m most people are only going to start this about a week ahead of time, um, but if you are one of those people that wants to start super early, it might be easier to do the first option. So again, the first option is, is more about a historical figure. I list some people that you could choose from. You could pick somebody who is not listed, but you would have to have me approve that person first. Okay. So here are some people that you could choose to write on. Uh, some of them we've already talked about in class, some of them we haven't. And then you can choose someone that's different than that, but you'd have to have that person approved by me. So this is someone that's important to transgender history. I do not suggest that you pick somebody who is um, around doing really great work right now unless they're older and have been doing it for a while, okay? Um, just because I want you to have uh, a good amount of resources available and um, for it to be a significant person that other people are going to recognize as significant as well. I know we're still writing transgender history, so... I understand that, but try to pick somebody who there's more resources around for. All right, and then you have to answer these three questions if you're choosing this third, uh, or if you're choosing this first option. What impact has this person had on transgender history? How is this person's identity similar or different from the way transgender identity is understood in the U.S. today? Um, so this one, for instance, Sylvia Rivera didn't think of herself as transgender early on in her life. She thought of herself as a drag queen or a transvestite. So how is that identity different than maybe how she later came to identify or how we understand transgender identity today? And then third, why should people today care about this person and their legacy? Okay, this paper does need to have, you know, the typical things that go in a formal paper, introduction, conclusion, uh, body paragraphs. So even though I ask you these three questions, you know, just make sure that they all get answered, but you don't necessarily have to have, you know, three full paragraphs for each one. I mean, that might be a, an idea, but you might have a thesis that somehow deals with all three of these things, and then and then you deal with them in the paper. So just make sure that, that you give a good amount of space to each of these three questions, but if you want to, you know, put them all in a, a thesis statement, and then deal with two of them in one, and then separate it out in two other paragraphs, that's totally fine. All right, I'm gonna come back to option B, but let me make sure that I tell you more about what the papers re require. So both options are gonna require this. 45 pages, you're gonna summarize cite one scholarly peer-reviewed 10 plus pages source on your topic or a closely related topic if there's none available specifically on your topic. Any source, on the course outline does not count, okay? So you can cite a source from the course, that's fine, but you have to have one of these, okay? So, summarize slash cite. Um, cite means that you could paraphrase um, parts of it or you could include a quote. Summarize, you will also have to cite, but it has to be peer-reviewed. Peer-reviewed means that something is written by an expert in the field and other experts in that field have determined whether or not it's good enough to be published. So that means it's probably not going to go on a blog site. That means that it's probably not going to be in a newspaper or magazine. Newspaper or magazines do have a publishing standard, but those publishing standards are determined usually by something involved with capitalism. You know, like, is this going to get a lot of clicks? Is this going to sell an, a lot of copies of whatever magazine? Uh, and the, the review process doesn't include experts in the field. It, it includes experts from the field of journalism. So peer-reviewed means that peers, you know, fellow experts in the field have approved this. So, um, you know, one, one publication that you might check out is the Transgender Studies Quarterly, which is accessible through UIC's library. It's newly accessible. I had to beg and plead for it to become accessible. So that's... That's one option. Uh, the Transgender Studies Reader, the first one or the second one, um, might have some interesting options in there as well, um, as well as you know, gay and lesbian, or the what is it called? We talked about it in class. Um, 
Gamma is being quarterly or, or whatever that the name of that publication is. So those are some options and you might find some other sources. Um, undoubtedly you're going to find some other sources, you know, if you want to look into a, a history journal specifically or an English journal specifically, um, you might find uh, what you need there. But it has to be scholarly. It has to be written by other people who are experts in those fields. It has to be in a, some sort of scholarly journal. If what I'm saying isn't super clear to you and you just want me to approve it, um, you know, just send me a link or send me the, the bio bibliographic information for whatever source that you're looking at, and I'm happy to tell you whether or not it's peer-reviewed, but you can also talk to a research librarian. Uh, if you go to the library's webpage, you can even just uh, instant message with a librarian and ask these questions as well. All right, so keep your introductory and concluding paragraphs brief. You do need them, but don't make them super long. Include a thesis statement in the introduction. This body... This paper requires body paragraphs. All paragraphs need to have a topic sentence. Textual evidence. Textual evidence is where you show um, in some sources how whatever you said in your topic sentence is true. Okay, So you are making a statement that supports your thesis statement and the topic sentence. And then you're going to have citations, quotes, paraphrase, or summary from other texts that are going to support this topic sentence. All quotes require analysis afterwards, so don't just drop in a quote. You have to explain, you know, why that's useful, what you meant by it. This is just basic kind of English writing um, skills for formal papers, but I wanted to make sure to explain them to you in case, in case you didn't know what my expectations were. You need to use signal phrases. You can't just put a quote in. You have to say, oh, according to whoever the quote or you can say, Jones said, or whatever. That's a signal phrase. You also need to include in-text citations for all textual evidence. I require, I think I require, yeah, I require you to have MLA citations, which means that you have to, um, you have to actually include the page number for uh, whatever it is that you're quoting, or citing, paraphrasing, summarizing. And then I don't want you to have too many quotes, so I limit you to six lines. All right, so you must quote, quote or paraphrase from at least three sources, one scholarly source plus two others. Um, you can also include text from the course if you want, but you have to have these as well. And then I give you some format notes. I give you some examples of in-text citations. This would be an example of, you know, in-text citation or this. Um, and then I give you some submission notes and, you know, how I'm going to grade it. Okay? All right, second option for this paper is you should do some research on one indigenous slash non-Western form of gender variance. Examples are all of these. Um, some of, most of these we're going to mention in class. Feel free to utilize any sources on the course outline. You may choose an indigenous non-Western form not mentioned here. And you know, it would be really useful to look at the optional readings as well if this is something that you're interested in. Uh, once you've done some research and learned a bit about uh, one of these forms of gender variance, write a paper that answers these questions. What's the history of this type of gender variance? How does it compare to current U.S.-based understandings of transgender? What are the contemporary needs of members of this community? Okay, so that is what is required for the short paper. You have the choice, option A, option B. It does need to be formal, introduction, conclusion, thesis statement, textual evidence, index citations, works cited pages, as a works cited page or a bibliography bibliography page at the end. I require MLA for the in-text citations, but if you want to use APA or something else for the bibliography, you're welcome to do that. Okay, so once again, that is going to be due on March 7th, which is two weeks from today. Uh, okay, and then after that you have another response paper and another um, couple assigned readings, and then the rest of Stryker, and then we'll have spring break after that. Okay, so there's a lot of things coming up in the next two weeks, and that's just what I really need you to understand so that you're fully prepared um, for what's coming up next. Okay? All right, back to this PowerPoint. All right, so because of the upcoming assignments, I highly recommend you take the exam early. You are going to have several days to take the exam, um, so depending on your schedule, whatever you want. But I'm strongly encouraging you to just get it out of the way as soon as possible so that you can have more time to work on your other assignments. All right? All right, so the second thing we're going to talk about this video is the exam directions or just information about the exam. All right, there's no class held on Thursday. Um, to give you time to prepare for, or to give you time to take the exam. 
you can take the exam anytime, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. So I'm probably going to have the exam um, set up on Blackboard in the next couple of days, but you'll be able to take it anytime, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, or Sunday, but the exam must be finished by 11.59 p.m. on Sunday. Okay, it has to be done by then. And you know what? Whenever I do this, people are, like, probably 90% of the people, maybe 80, 80% of the people wait until the last minute to take the exam. Don't be that person. Like, give yourself some space. Deal with it when your mind is fresh. And maybe your mind is fresh at 10 o'clock at night, but um, make sure that you pick a time that's good for you, not just the last one available, okay? Because you have other things that you need to do, perhaps prepare for the proposal or speak in the short paper. It's up to you, again, so no judgment if you want to wait till 10. Uh, you know, everybody's different. Everybody has different priorities, so it's up to you. But once you start the exam, you have to finish it, all right? So if it closes at 11.59 and you have two hours to take it because it's timed, then you'd have to start it by 10, okay? Well, 9.59. Again, let me emphasize this. Because of the upcoming assignments, I highly recommend you take the exam early to give yourself time to begin working on other assignments. All right, where to take the exam? Choose a quiet place where you have strong Wi-Fi. Don't attempt to do it in a place that could get loud. Do it at home, a library, or something like that. I've had students who write to me, and they beg and plead to be able to take the exam late because, or to take the exam again, because they took it one time, and they did horribly on it because they just chose the wrong location. And, you know, I kind of took pity on people, or take pity, pity on the person who talked to me about this one time, but I'm not going to take pity on you because I'm warning you about this. Okay, so make sure that you do it in some place quiet. <coughs> make sure you give yourself enough time to set up and take the exam. Again, the limit is two hours. Um, I've definitely had people get done in 45 minutes, um, and it's not like they did terrible on it. They did pretty good. But the limit is two hours, so make sure that you um, give yourself enough time to, to set up, to review some of the materials, get your stuff organized, and then actually take the exam. All right, as I mentioned, the exam is timed. Once you start the exam, you'll have two hours to complete it. After two hours, Blackboard will automatically submit your exam, so make sure you watch your time. Okay, it's really important that you... Um, have that awareness because the time is going to go by super quick. One thing to note too, if anybody gets anxious about seeing a clock, I think I'm pretty sure that there's a timer that pops up. It might depend on your, you know, operating system. But I've had students complain before that there's a time a timer that shows up and it just stares at you while you're trying to take the exam. So just be prepared that that's there if you want to have a post-it note ready so that you can cover it up while you're thinking. Um, you're welcome to. Just well, you're welcome to do that. You will be able to see all the questions at once. I know sometimes when you take a quiz or a, an exam on Blackboard, they um, only let you look at one question at a time. You can see all of them at the same time. So you're welcome to change the first question, you know, at the end of the exam if you want or whatever you want. You can see it all. All right, it's open note but you still need to study, okay? So you are welcome to use any notes or any class materials or any of the videos um, that I have posted, okay? You're totally welcome to just use those in the middle of your exam. But do not take this as a sign that you shouldn't study. Every semester, I warn people about this, and every semester, I still have a, like, a big segment of the class who does extremely poorly. And not poorly like they don't know how to do better, but, like, poorly, like they do a lot better on the final exam because they just didn't prepare well for the midterm. So make sure that you prepare for the midterm. Just because it's open note does not mean it's going to be easy and you don't need to study. Students, like I said, they always do poorly, but it's, it's not as easy as that. So my advice to you is to study for the exam as if you can't use your notes. All right? You can use your notes, but study for it like you can't. Then once you take the exam, your notes are just there if you get stuck, not there for you to lean on and rely on the entire time. They're just there if you get stuck. But if you're flipping through all your notes, you're, you'll not get done with the exam in two hours. The time goes by quickly. So if you're flipping through your notes all the time, you know, you're only going to get through half the exam. So make sure that you actually study and are prepared. All right, cheating. Now, I give you a whole list of what's cheating um, in the study guide, but let me go over some of them, too. All right, don't use the Internet, except for course readings. All right, so you're welcome to look at the course readings or any links that uh, were part of the course readings, but you cannot use the Internet to, like, search for terms or search for, like, who's that person? I don't remember. Um, don't do that. 
you're going to get point deductions or you could possibly fail the entire exam if you do that. I have done it before. I will do it again um, if I find if I if I find out that you did it, and I can find out um, in some cases. In some cases, I just I'll never know, but in a lot of cases, I will be able to find out because whatever you know, Wikipedia or whoever says about it is either incorrect or it doesn't it doesn't quite jive with some of the materials that we saw, or it's too much information um, versus some of the materials that we saw. So make sure that you're relying on the text from this class or from discussion that we've had in this class. Do not use the internet. Also, sometimes people use the internet and they just get the wrong answers, like just totally off the wall wrong, because the internet is just really, really broad, but we have a very particular way, way that we're looking at materials in this class. All, right, all work must be done completely independent. Um, that might seem self-explanatory because it's an exam, but I want to make sure to tell you that. Um, don't take the exam with someone else in the room. Um, don't ask your mom what the answer to whatever question is. Don't ask someone from the class. You know, Don't take pictures of the exam and send it to somebody else. Like This has to be done completely independently. And again, that point deduction or possible failure applies if I find about it any form of cheating. All right, you're welcome to study with other folks prior to the exam, but do not talk to anyone about the exam or share resources once you've taken it, okay? So make sure that you are not cheating, okay? All right, how to access the exam. This might be self-explanatory, but let me make sure that I show you. Okay, so you go into Blackboard, you log into our page, and then see on the left, you click on exams. Once you click on exams, you'll see this note from me, um, but you'll also see midterm. Right now, neither of these are available. Are of, neither of these can be viewed by you, but um, by the time the exam opens, this midterm exam will be open and you can view it. So you just click on it. Once you click on it, you'll be given the instructions one more time. You'll also be given this password, which is also on the study guide. I will not cheat. <laughs> That's the password, all lowercase, no period or anything. And then uh, once you click begin, it'll ask you for this password, and then you'll have a two hours starting then to take the exam. Okay? Again, you only have one opportunity to take it. It won't let you take it again. If any sort of technology problem happens, you're welcome to email me so that I can try to help you resolve it. So these are just the steps. And then you begin the exam. All right, a word about something related to the exam. Okay, so these two buttons are at the beginning of the exam and at the end of the exam. And they're on the right next to these other buttons. Okay, so like this button will be right here and this one will be right above it. So I've had people who take the first question and they end up clicking this one and then it s submits their whole exam and they're not able to take it again without me resetting it. So you want to make sure that you click the right buttons, okay? So let's talk about what buttons do which one. This dark blue one, that's the one that says save and submit. That's going to save all your answers. It's going to submit all your answers. That means you're done with the exam. Okay, so do not ac like accidentally push this button. Only push this button when you are ready. Okay, so again, in case this mouse isn't showing up, the dark blue one, save and submit. Only push that one once you're absolutely done with the exam. So that's at the very beginning. And that's at the very end of the exam. Now, after all, after each individual question, you'll have something like this. Um, it'll say how many points that question is worth, and then it'll say save answer. Save answer just means that the computer or the, yeah, the computer, not the computer, but like something in the cloud, you know, on the Blackboard server saved your response. So if suddenly, you know, the electricity goes out, the internet gets cut, this whatever answer you wrote for this one will be saved if you click to save answer. Okay, so this will not submit your exam, it will just save the answer for that one individual question. Now if you click this one, it's not going to submit everything, it's just going to save everything. So I would recommend clicking, clicking this after each one or clicking this one occasionally, but even if you don't click any of them, it should, um, it should save and submit uh, at the end. Okay, so just make sure you don't click this dark blue one at the end. And I'd recommend after you're done with everything, just click save all answers and then click save submit. But I think the dark blue one would, would work either way. 
Alright, so I've had people have tech problems before where something just goes wrong, the internet cuts out, or there's some sort of user error that leads to them not being able to um, complete the exam. So these are my recommendations based on what students have told me. Okay, so to avoid any technical problems before you begin the exam, make sure any browser tab with Blackboard open has been closed except for the one that you plan to take the exam in. I wouldn't even have it in different browsers. Like, just close everything down um, that's related to Blackboard except for the one tab that you're going to be taking the exam in. And don't log back into Blackboard in a different tab window or browser, okay? You just want to have the one open. All right, if you're going to do that, that means that you have to plan ahead and open everything that you need from Blackboard ahead of time. Okay, so go into Blackboard first, get everything that you need off of Blackboard, and then once you're ready to start the exam, then that's the only window that's open. Okay, that's my suggestion. Now, you can have other tabs open, say to other texts, but you can't actually be logged into Blackboard in those tabs. I right, also recommend taking screenshots of your exam as you work, just as a safeguard in case tech fails. Okay, so screenshots, there's usually a button on a PC anyway, and on a Mac, I don't know, but you could Google it if you're not sure. So that's one option. I've had tech problems happen maybe once or twice per semester, but for some reason last semester I had like several, so... um please make sure that you are are trying to to, to do everything correctly and, and if you could keep some screenshots while you're taking it that's gonna help as well alright if you run into any problem email me right away if something does go wrong and I'll try to answer you as soon as I can but I might not be able to answer right away so um, just be aware that I might not be able to answer right away okay but if anything does go wrong just email me right away wrong button okay but one other thing is that we never got a chance to actually discuss Bornstein in class, but I did give you my notes about it, and it will be on the exam. So make sure that you are familiar with my notes, and if you have questions about it, you can talk to me. All right, so we've talked about these two things already, and then now we've got to talk about exam preparation. And these two sections will be a lot shorter than the other two. All right, exam study guide. It's linked in the course schedule. Let's go ahead and take a look at it right now. So if you, um, you know, go to today in the schedule and click here, you'll be taken to the study guide. I don't know why it's called tentative reading schedule, but this is the study guide, okay? So you'll be taken to the midterm study guide, and it's able to give you all the directions for the exam. Um, we've gone over, I think, all of this. All right, but the structure part is important, okay, so that you know there's going to be fill in the blank, about 15 blanks. We'll tend to find this the most challenging out of the entire exam. Um, there's about 75 um, points. There's about 75 points, um, which I then will give you a percentage for your exam, or, uh, or give you, I'll convert to you know, points out of 100, but in terms of how many points are on the exam itself, it's it's around 75. So 15 of those are fill in the blank. People usually find that the most challenging. You have matching, about 20 questions. This, this is maybe the simplest one, because you got, I do 10 words and then 10 descriptions that you have to match to those 10 words or phrases, and then another question that's 10 words or phrases that you then match to 10 descriptions. Multiple choice, there's actually no multiple choice on this exam. Uh, true or false, false, there's five questions that are true or false, I think. Alright, about the fill in the blanks. If you can't quite, like I tell you if I'm looking for one word or, or if the blank is more than one word, but if you can't quite figure it out, you can try to come up with something else and maybe you'll get partial credit. Uh, maybe maybe you'd even get full credit. Um, so if, if you find a word that is or if you find something that goes in that blank that, that you think works best, that isn't just one word, or isn't just however many words I tell you it should be, um, then go ahead and, and, and put it in there. But just realize that uh, you might only get half credit, you might get no credit. So I'm usually trying to think of something very specific that's related to the notes that I gave you, and related to stuff that we talked about in class. So 
So again, context again is very important for this film. Fill in the blank. Okay, so those are the ones that are worth one point each, and then there are some that are worth more. So you have uh, one that's like short answers, and that is one to four sentences that you'd need to write, and then you have longer questions. All right, so there's going to be four of these shorter questions, four points each, um, where you have to write one to four sentences. And then you have two of the longer questions that are 10 points each. And the longer questions require like 5 to 20 sentences. Okay, so we're talking about like a whole full paragraph, depending on how, how long your sentences are. And those are the, the way that I order it is these come last. So you want to make sure you're watching your time so that you have enough space to do all of these. All right, so again, it's 75 to 80 points, and then I convert it, and it might even be slightly less than 75, and then I'll convert it to a, a weighted grade out of 100. I will curve the results if it's needed. If it's not needed, then I won't do it. But it usually doesn't doesn't actually help the grade that much if I do do it. Okay, so how do you prepare for the exam? You're going to need to know the basic information about each text we read or viewed. Pay attention to text means arguments, and when I say text, I mean something that you read that's just words, or something that you view that has images and audio. Okay, so this is videos or readings. So the text main arguments, key terms defined in the text, context terms and points discussed in class, key sections of the text pointed out in class, related issues discussed in class, connections with other text read in the course. So this is really what you're going to do when you're reviewing. All right, terms and context concepts. I used to just give a list of like a hundred terms here, but I've decided to break it up into all these notes that I give you. Some of these notes are going to have just like points that, you know, it's like I just tell you exactly what you need to know. Other than them, you're going to have to look up. So let's look at one of the um, note sets. So here's a note set from, or a set of notes from Strikers, Query Theory, Evil Twin. So I have these discussion questions, so make sure that you have a, an idea of how to answer these discussion questions. And then I just have, um, you know, these terms, these names. Who are these people? What do these terms mean? So you'd have to actually look up and see, well, what does this text say about queer nation? What is that? Why, why did they bring it up? Or why did she bring it up? Um, so make sure that you have an understanding of, of what all these things mean. You may have to look them up. Um, I think most of the notes in here you would have to, to look up or we would have discussed in class. Um, and when I say look up, I mean look into the reading, look into Stryker's Queer Theories Evil Twin and try to find the answers to like what are these things, what are the contexts related to these things. Other notes are going to just tell you exactly what I want you to know, like the definition of this, which is this, and I'll just say it point blank. Others, you'll have to go and look it up in the reading. Okay, so back to the PowerPoint. That's what's available for the study guide. All right, so for the exam, I already kind of talked about these things. Um, make sure you fully understand my needs. Look up any context in the text if you don't understand them. I know we already did that. Okay, so, so far we've discussed these three things, now we're going to talk about my, my remote office hours. Now I already mentioned this in the email, but let me just go over it again as well. So I, because I can't be on campus today, um, because I'm not able to, to um, be in class today, I'm going to make myself available to you through calling. Okay? Now, I'm guessing I'm not going to have a big number of people who call, but if I am on the other line or can't get to the phone in time, just leave a message and I'll call you back. That's like fairly shortly, I would assume. So I will have my phone and be looking at it the entire time. All right, so this is my phone number. You know, don't sign me up for anything. Don't get me... <laughs> I mean, I guess you could, like... Well, no. So don't misuse my phone number, please. I don't think anybody was planning on it, but... All right, you can call me anytime, today only, from 11.45 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. So that was kind of times I was going to be on campus anyway. Um, now I'm giving this time slot to my other class, too, um, but I'm thinking that I'm not going to have, like, 30 people calling me. But, again, here's my phone number. Here are the times that you're allowed to call me. 
You're welcome to email me if calling is not your thing, but give me your number so I can call you back if I think talking through it would be better. Because some of these things are just kind of hard to write out, or it's going to take me like way longer to write it out instead of just talking to you. So um, feel free to email me your questions if you want, or uh, call me directly. And you can email me with other questions anytime. Okay, so if you come up with a question two days from now, you're welcome to email me that too. Just realize that if you do it after today, um, I might not answer as quickly, but I'll try to answer as soon as I'm able, okay? So that's what's happening with my remote office hours today. Those questions that you might ask me would be about, like, you know, I looked in, I looked in Stryker's, uh, Queer Theory, or, yeah, Queer Theory's Evil Twin, about this point, and I don't know, I couldn't figure it out, could you tell me what the context was, or, I, you have this quote on here, but I don't know what, what point you wanted to make about the quote, or I'm not sure what this part of the quote means, then that, that would be how much you could ask me about, okay? You could also ask me any, like, questions about the exam or upcoming assignments, too. All right, so that's it. Keep calm, and good luck with the exam, as well as any of the other projects that you want to be working on. So thanks for watching this video and being flexible with me today, and um, have a good day. All right, bye.